right, everybody. How's it going? It's a Monday, and it is a Monday Monday, my friends. But we're here with y'all. We're going to talk some games tonight. We've had a lot of video game news all over the place this last week, but even some of it was Star Wars. We got a full cast of characters to talk all things that we've loved about past and future video games, but none of that can start until the man with a plan decides to stand. I ran out of rhymes. Just punch it, Wes. <laughs> UTD Network podcast tonight, all about the present and future of Star Wars gaming. I'm one of your hosts, Eric Eilerson, and joining me tonight is a lovely crew, including the man finally back after what we found out is two shows off, not one, Dr. Corey Helton. Welcome back to your chair, my friend. Hello. Hello. Back in my chair once again. It has been a wild couple of weeks, friends. I was on vacation. You know, actually, I would love to have a great excuse about how I've been out saving lives and working. Actually, two weeks ago, the reason I missed the show is because I was really drunk. So, you know. Um... <laughs> we tried to cover for you, but there it is. There yeah. <laughs> I know. I was on vacation and hanging out with family and had a lot of dr had a lot to drink on the beach. And I was like, you know what? This is terrible. Uh, I'm going to message Eric. And Eric gave me three strikes. He said, this is the last time <laughs> you're allowed to give me a same day notice of not being on the show. Well deserved. Well deserved. I will say, you know, I'm used to being able to drink and get out of my doctor duties because if they call you into work and you're like, sorry, I've been drinking, you know, it's, <laughs> they got to find somebody else. Right. Because that would not be safe. So that doesn't work on the show, unfortunately. That is the first time you've said something about the American medical system that actually makes me feel good about it. So <laughs> <laughs> that's good. I legitimately uh, used that a couple of times in residency. They'd call you, you and be like, like, you need to come in to work. Somebody called in sick. I'd be like, ooh, it's 8 a.m. I've been drinking all night long. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. Like, Are you serious? Bad. I'm like, I'm dead serious. All right. I got to go. See ya. Yeah. Like, I'm in residency. Do you know what we have that. to deal with? I know. I did that uh, times, actually, but, you know, sorry. To but the man. The man who is not in residency, and I don't know if he's drunk or not because he can hide it so well. That's not true. Actually, I don't know. It's Wes Jenkins. <laughs> <What>? Hey, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. I didn't completely binge drink for the 45 <laughs> minutes that I've been home from work. <laughs> I know people who do, so I get it. But you could. <laughs> but you if could. I wanted to. I'm an adult. I can do this. I have, I have aspirations and goals until, you know, tomorrow mm -hmm. when I have to work for the man. But, you know, whatever. Um, what's up, everybody? Uh, it's 101 at regular oh temperatures, God. but it feels like 110 or some crap like that. That's and awful. It's like 90 degrees at 9:30 at night. Um, you can cut like you can cut the humidity with a butter knife, and it's disgusting. So, welcome to Texas. We stay in, oh. in we stay indoors for the next three four months. That's <laughs> awful. But 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 Wes. Your hair looks great. Thank you. I just got it. So, it I, just got, I just got it trimmed um, at a new place, actually, because oh, really? I had a mishap like a month ago. I got my, I don't know if I t told you all that story. I got a haircut at Sport Clips. I've been going there since I was like 10. Sport like Clips, constantly, will, like always went there. Like I was like, I, I would drive like further out just to go to the sport clips because there's a tv there and they don't mess with you or whatever if the haircut sucks you know your hair grows out I'm not i'm not really worried about it but man did i get a terrible haircut one day <laughs> oh, and i no. tipped this woman and i went home and i was like man can i get by with this and then i tried to like <laughs> fix oh my it. god i tried to fix it myself and i was like nah this can't be fixed so I went somewhere else. I went to oh a place. Oh my god! You got like, a second haircut? Called like Roosters or something. It was a great place. And I walked oh, in yeah, and, I, and, I, and I was I like, "Listen, Roosters." I was like, "Listen, uh, I need you to help me because I just got a terrible haircut." <laughs> and this woman took longer to fix my hair than the lady that did it before um, that had done it initially. So 
I have a new place that I go to now. It's a little bit more expensive, but um, I appreciate the work that they do, and they ask me if I want something to drink when I get there, which is nice. Yeah, okay. excellent. <laughs> Wes, I, I kid you not. I went to my first Roosters when I moved. That's my place here. Okay. I go to that no, chain. Yeah. They're awesome. It is yeah. A yeah, yeah, yeah. You can drink. Yeah, they're a you franchise. Yeah. yeah. Listen, yeah. I've been I've been to like the the fancy men's shops where they got the beard stuff, you know, the haircut, and they want to serve you alcohol. I just can't drink the beer while I'm getting my hair. I just I have this overwhelming fear that I'm gonna get hair clippings in my beer. Right. And I just can't I just can't I can't do it. <laughs> you know, I respect man. that. I can't do it. <laughs> Although this one, I don't know if they gave this to you, Wes, at Roosters, they did the, the hot towel on my face yes. for the first time. And yes. I was like, cool. Although for a second, I'm like, am I dying? Am I dying? Because I've never <laughs> had it like, on my face. Like, I'm like, my nose is out. I'm like, I can breathe out my nose, right? Do I know how to do this? Yes. I was great. I'm right there with you because that was the first time that I had a hot tail on my face, hot towel yep. on my face. And like, it sits there and it warms and then it cools. And then she takes the towel off your face. And yep. you're just like, you know what? That's nice. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I enjoy that. I can conquer the world right now. <laughs> and it's not um, it's not extra. So, you know, hey. No, it's all included. <laughs> but you know what, everyone? What's not all inclusive is this show right now. Because we haven't gotten the last part guest, our last member of our show, uh, who's been listening to us just jabber on about hot towels and stuff. It is our friend, our comics expert, and the man who DM'd me the second he finished Jedi Survivor saying, I gotta be on this show because this game was awesome. It's Mr. Jacob Bosch. Really, though, it's Jacob Boosh, if you know, you know. Boosh. That, that's me. Uh, I also have hair, so fun fact. Uh, yeah, yeah no, and you're also been, looking great. Uh, Look at that. Thank you, thank you. Uh, it's great to be here, even though I have a very scenic hotel background behind me. Uh, but Glorious. You know, it's, used to uh, it. it's been... Yeah, no, it's... Uh, this is my first time on the living force uh for i think two and a half years i've been with uti so finally happy to chat it. with you all finally made yeah. it <laughs> we're happy to have you dude glad to have um, you man yeah jacob has forgotten more about comics than i'll ever know um is a true. proud I have forgotten a lot that is very fair yeah <laughs> you're you're also <laughs> a proud card carrying member of v both of valence nation and nubs nation um Neither of which should come up tonight, but they might. Who knows? Uh, you know, you would actually be surprised on one of those. Well, here's well, here's the but question: we'll Are you are you Nubs Nation or Nick's Nation? If you have to uh, choose, yeah, I well, to be determined. We have to actually see more of Nick's. Um, That's fair. But you know, the fact that D. Bradley Baker has done <laughs> Nick's Nubs and like a billion different clones really kind of shows the range of what he's working with. Um, yeah, Insane. no, it's it's crazy. Amazing stuff. Well, we're happy to have you, man. We're happy to chat some games tonight. Also happy to have all of you watching, listening, however you're taking in the show. Hope you're having a great day. Make sure you like the video and subscribe to the channel for all the stuff coming your way. Um, Because it's been a hot minute, I also just want to check in with y'all and see how you've been. Um, A lot of you have known that over the last couple months, uh, Corey, Charles, and myself – have been diving into some Brandon Sanderson stuff with Mistborn. I then, because of my obsessive nature and my inability to do anything at less than 100%, have gone way further. And uh, this past week, I was like, you know what? I'm in a bit of a reading slump. I should do something nice and easy to kind of get, you know, jumpstart me. You ever do that? You know, you want to just get your momentum back. So I decided to read The Way of Kings, which is a thousand pages, um, <laughs> <laughs> to do that. And I I'm getting there. I'm, I'm, about, I'm almost 300 pages in. Uh, but this, uh, hot take, it's great. This book's <laughs> incredible. Um, it's, uh, the book, one of the Stormlight Archive, which is Sanderson's giant epic. I finally felt ready to begin it. I then ordered the next three books because I had an Amazon gift card. Uh, so everything's nice. on my shelf and that's been my week has just isn't, been sitting and isn't reading the, <laughs> Isn't the way of Kings largely considered to be Barry, uh, Sanderson's best book that he's ever written? Yeah, generally. I think uh, it is, I think, right? Yeah, Stormlight is apparently like the magnum opus and way of Kings. A lot of people, I don't know because it's first or just because it sets everything up is like <clears throat> a lot of people's favorite. Although yeah. the, cause apparently it's going to be a 10 book series made it up of two five book arcs and he's writing the fifth one now. So I'm guessing that will be a pretty, I got 13, 1400 pages. Like who knows, Jesus. man, it's, but it's are a good glad, time. Uh, are you glad that you read Mistborn first? You wish you had started. Oh with God. That. So glad. So I, I read Mistborn trilogy first and then I read Elantris and Warbreaker, which are two standalones. I'm very mm -hmm. glad I did that. Cause I tried reading yeah. this book like two, three years ago 
and I just, I just couldn't do it. It was too much. But now that I know his word style, and I like, I guess I trust him. <laughs> yeah, like, like, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you start a thousand. You think page of a fantasy book, book. yeah. It's like yeah. so much lore. It's like I don't know if this is gonna pay off or not. Yeah, yeah. It's like I, I think I'll get it. it. It's like okay, this was Sh- Shalon, and this is Zeth. And what are the what? Are, and he's lashing himself, and there and Loth. I'm like, okay, fine. I know. Uh, I'm I'm gonna understand. I'm Lashings? gonna understand. <laughs> Lashings. <laughs> there's a prologue to the series, and then there's a prologue to this book, and then there's a first chapter that has none of the characters of the two prologues. So you wow. just gotta like give into it. <laughs> That's excellent. Sounds yeah, yeah. So I don't know. We're time. slowly we're slowly becoming big Sanderson fans on this uh, on this show. Charles <laughs> got us into this, and uh, I think I was next, and then Eric was after me. And Eric has taken it further than the rest of us have. But uh, it's uh, fantastic writing. Seriously, I mean, yeah. if you need a palate cleanser from Star Wars, like it's a yeah. excellent choice. Excellent choice. The hype is real. It's not just yes. uh, you know, you don't have to be a bandwagon fan. You can jump on that for sure. So yeah, really we we like to give into the hype stuff, and I mean, even even this past week, <clears> we had all this gaming news, and of course, you know, I want to see what else you guys have been up to. But I know at least one of those days, Corey, you were watching the Starfield Direct with yes, a bunch of us at Utini. That was really, and fun. that was that a was whole a day. day. <laughs> that was a fun day. You know, I think the past two weeks have had we've had some really good days in Slack the last couple of weeks. Like we have, you know, have. it's like it's it's such a tight community. Our team is that like half of the folks on the team are are still just here because like I feel like they're trading the the, the little bit of work that they put in every once in a while mm-hmm. to just be able to get access, basically. Because I mean, it feels like we have these days in Slack where it's just chaos and the xbox what was it called xbox showcase right yeah Yeah. xbox showcase that led into the starfield direct yeah Yeah. that's like that's one of the best days in gaming i think we've had in a long time good lord they announced so much really cool stuff and finally i have rewatched the starfield like showcase like Mm -hmm. twice because (laughs) i cannot believe how how fun this game looks like yeah i really hope that it's as good as it looks i hope that it's it's the hype is not unjustified but like i am absolutely in the cannot manage expectations camp at this point not at all. because it looks like it's just going to be a blast i mean there's mm-hmm. just so much to do and the, it looks graphically beautiful the dialogue sounds fun and hilarious mm-hmm. like i am like all on board i absolutely bought the you guys know i don't ever pre-order anything ever and i always mm-hmm. Crap on everybody on the team that buys no. any of the accessories and shit. Yep. I bought yep. both the headset and the controller immediately. I was so as soon happy. as they <laughs> as soon as they came on sale, and oh my god, they are so beautiful. Seriously, it looked the retro look. It's fantastic. I'm a big fan. I'm I can't wait. I hope it's great. What does the uh, headset and the controller do they have any kind of advantage <clears throat> for you? They look or cool. Just the aesthetics. Just, what? What cool. a COD gamer question. <laughs> what? what a call it. Does it help me? Does it help my aim? Can I min max? Listen, the headset Turn all is the music the, down. Uh, all you want to hear is footsteps. I don't give a damn about bass. All I want to hear about is footsteps. <laughs> <laughs> Damn the it, headset is the uh it's the microsoft the xbox controller you know what i'm talking about mm-hmm. Wes, where it's got the one that they released when the xbox team have you seen it like one side has the oh yeah i do yeah yeah, yeah. okay one side yeah. has the the game chat mix which is great the other I side is the volume that. yeah, yeah it's really cool I've, I've actually i owned a uh i accidentally bought a wired one one time because it was on sale and i thought it was the wireless i was like shit i'm getting a really good deal <laughs> it was freaking wired it was freaking uh, wired when i got it but it, I mean, it's exactly the same except it's wired and i kept it for like a week or two and just tested it out and it was comfortable and stuff but i just could i didn't need a wired set of headphones so mm-hmm. but yeah the game mix thing is really cool i'm a big fan of that and uh it's a really sleek set i'm glad i bought it i have no buyer's remorse about it i just hope the game is good i hope the game is yeah. good yeah so. yeah the last game I pre-ordered was Cyberpunk, and I'm it's scarred, <laughs> freaking scarred. All right, I know Eric is sitting in his. <laughs> At least the he chair's also yellow. purchased before the game was out. Yeah, risky, although this was way more expensive moves. than both your controller and headset That's combined. That's true. Um, Jacob, yeah. did you watch the? What do you? What, what is your gaming life coming up now? Because you you also again play play a decent yeah. amount of games here and there. I do. I yeah. I watched the Starfield direct with you all, or at least like sort of. I was it. Oh, it was Sunday, so I did watch it. Um, it was wow. It was. But yeah, I I'm excited. Uh, I am a little bit more skeptical because I think we've just kind of. It's been too long since we've had like a proper single player Bethesda game. So I think we're all kind of going yeah. with rose tinted glasses. We don't remember as closely the 
fail compilations, the bug compilations, the, you know, games absolutely just breaking themselves that we had in the like Skyrim Fallout 3 era. So I'm excited, but I'm also trying to like reserve my expectations till we get there. I have been like absolutely neck deep in Tears of the Kingdom, uh, which is yeah! been a phenomenal game. Uh, it's like it's crazy how I, I've seen a lot of people compare that and across the Spider-Verse, which I've not seen. But being sequels that are sequels on things that people did not think you could improve on, and then somehow yeah. both of them like taking it to that next That's level. True. So it's I been love that. it's been a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah, uh, I totally agree with that. I think I'm the only other one here that's playing Zelda, mm-hmm. right? You guys have not played it, and correct. Think, you don't have a Switch. Switchless. You know, one of you guys have a Switch, right? No. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I've been watching. No, no, play. I, I, I totally back you up. I saw a really great video a while back that was like, it was talking about how Zelda they literally changed nothing. It's the same. "Quote unquote <laughs> bad graphics is the same controls. They only change a couple of your little superpowers that you have, and like, but the game is phenomenal. I really love that they. It seems like they they found all the inspiration from all the funny videos that people had from like attaching the, what's the balloon thing called that we used to right. create, yeah, the build shit out of. Yeah, 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 we yeah. used to do that in the first game. It looks like that's where they took inspiration from the build system, which is genius. I love the build. I built so much stupid shit. It's so fun. <laughs> Yeah, my TikTok algorithm is showing me some of these things, and I'm like, one, there's really sick people the way they torture some of these poor guys, but then they're like burning crosses going into the sky, and then they make like full on Gundams, and I'm like, I know I would try to put like two pieces of wood together and it would like explode. Like, there's no way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it's it's very much like it's a very it's a very perfect game for I think TikTok clips, just like you said. Yeah. You have people building Gundams. I saw pe- someone build like a fully functioning like modern looking car where you hop in and the door closes with you uh and then oh yeah God. i'm like i'm like get the big platform stick four <laughs> wheels on the corner and hopefully i don't like bottom out at some point yes i know how does this defeat ganondorf anyway yeah. whatever I, i'm so out um so wes i see that you have done a slightly less complete indoor nerd thing <laughs> this week um <laughs> but you've added to your increasingly large amount of sports that you play Well, yes. So um, my girlfriend plays soccer. So she plays on like Saturday or Sundays and sometimes on Tuesdays. You're dating Alex Morgan? Awesome. No, I'm not. Um, um, (laughs) Close. Thanks for clarifying that. She's she's just as good. Um, Hell yeah. uh, Well done. Well said. (laughs) So she also plays indoor. So indoor soccer is basically like hockey, um, but you are playing, you know, like on a grass or an artificial turf. But you can mm-hmm. slam into people on the on like uh, against the boards, and they kick the absolute shit out of the ball. And there are <laughs> there are just like walls all around you, so you can like, if you're good at geometry, you can make it hit off one wall, go on the other, and then go into the goal. As long as your goalie knows what he's That's doing, cool. he can block it. But like there will be got another goalie because it's not very far. I would say it's it's probably maybe forty yards long. The other goalie can like kick the shit out of the ball from his side to the other and it can go like right into the goal if he's not paying attention wow it's uh but i mean that's actually uh not true because you can't kick it across three lines there's there's all these different kind of rules but all i could hear was just Ugh, a rule. smack so, so it is like smack. okay it's like icing okay smack right. and they hit it against this like plywood board that's around the goal so there's not a, like a deep goal it's only about i would say like two <coughs> feet deep and then the rest of it is, is covered by a plywood board. So when you miss, it's super loud. And, like, they will <clears throat> run into each other. They have a ref in there that gets yelled at constantly. But it was fun. <laughs> if you have the chance, awesome. If you have a chance to play or even to watch it, it's super fun to watch. It sounds yeah. awesome. It's like hockey I mean, plus. It's, it's, a good, it's like it's hockey. People, it's yeah. super cool. Is it, that they're is they're it glass? Like, yes. Are you watching yeah, it through, it's, like, it's plexiglass, like, like a, a hockey big, game? Yeah, it's a big plexiglass, like, arena it's like you fight to the death there's no that's like they sick. close the door and that's it like <laughs> it's just they're in there like playing they, they made rocket league in real life or yeah, something wow that's, <laughs> that's exactly what that's it fantastic. is fantastic i love nice. that. i did awesome. that on friday night guys go support your local indoor soccer team everybody you can tailgate anything it's america um right. so Oh, I love that. Uh, just about as much as I love our patrons over at patreon.com slash Shout out to all of you for supporting the show and the site and everything we do. 
A lot of great content coming your way. Um, I'm not sure the release plan here, but I do want to let everyone know Charlie and I have banked the rest of the Ghost Crew episodes for Season 3 of Star Wars Rebels. Those are coming your way very soon, so keep an eye out uh, for that Patreon-exclusive content as well as everything that is coming out there. All right, uh, Wes, we got one very aesthetically pleasing story for this week's Star Wars Weekly Roundup. It's the Star Wars Weekly Roundup! All right, everybody, we have a big convention coming up soon. No, it's not Star Wars Celebration. Stop talking about it. That's in Japan. We have San Diego, <laughs> we have San Diego Comic-Con coming up. Um, weirdly, a large event for Star Wars from time to time, even for publishing. Sometimes stuff gets announced. I'm not really hyped on that, but I am hyped because we did get an announcement of an exclusive being released at San Diego Comic-Con. This is an exclusive cover for Delilah S. Dawson's upcoming Inquisitor, Rise of the Red Blade, shown That's on sick. screen here. This shows um, two of our main characters, Iscot and, oh my gosh, I'm reading the book, Toa, uh, the Twi'lek Man, um, oh. <laughs> both kind of <laughs> mirrored Toe. in their Inquisitor and Jedi outfits. Um, this was Grant Griffin. Who drew this? Um, huge higher public concept artist. He's done a bunch of stuff. He did Myths and Fables, Dark Legends, all those books. Um, and y'all, I think this is probably the most impressive exclusive cover we've seen in a long time. And yeah, yeah what's that all about? Like yeah. if you I, turn yeah. it, right? if you turn it upside down, like <laughs> you read like the light side and you turn it the other way. And it's like, you nailed it, Wes. Yep, that's exactly how they wrote it. <laughs> it's an interactive book. You just have to keep going in circles. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Skilling cover for sure. Uh, our, our good friend Tom posted some photos too on Twitter, I think. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's got a texture too. It's like a canvas texture, mm -hmm. right? Which looks cool. Yep. It comes with this, this, uh, this stupid spinny lightsaber that I hate. It comes with a <laughs> yes! pin. It comes with a pin of that. <laughs> Yep. I stand by my hatred of the <laughs> spinny lightsabers. I'm never going to let this die. Uh, it's a good looking cover, though, for sure. Good looking yeah. Cover. Very jealous about it. Uh, for folks that want to know anything about it that are going to go to San Diego Comic Con, uh, be sure to stop by the Penguin Random House booth, um, which is uh, 1514 and 1515. And this is coming up July 19th through the 23rd, which times out perfectly because July 18th is when you can get your copy of Rise of the Red Blade. And make sure you go to eugenie.com and check out the release schedule for that. All right. So tonight, as I've said previously, as we kind of already started, we're talking all about gaming. Now, though, specifically Star Wars gaming. Um, we've had some pretty sweet Star Wars titles in the past, but this past week... With Summer Game Fest coming up, the Ubisoft thing, the Xbox Game Showcase, we got a lot of insight into what's coming up in the world of gaming. Um, one of the big stories, obviously, for Star Wars fans, the last few years has been EA has had the exclusive Star Wars license. So they made Battlefront 2, they made Battlefront, Jedi Survivor, and Jedi Fallen Order, which were good, but also were very spread out. Um, folks that were used to getting, like, you know, three Star Wars games a year back in, like, the early aughts really felt like there was a lack of content. But now that contract is up and Lucasfilm has been dispersing the the license to a few other game studios. So before we talk about those products, guys, I just want to ask you on a practical level, how do you feel about the EA exclusivity being up for Star Wars? Do you think this is good for more quantity? Um, and what do you think it means for the quality of products we might be able to get? Good riddance, assholes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, great. Moving on. <laughs> oh, man. That's how I feel. Straight yeah. up. Straight up. I, I don't know <laughs> that I can name a more toxic gaming company. Straight up. EA, they just... Activision sucks. You can name yeah, Activision. There's, there's a lot I don't of know, man. Out there. Activision's a close second. That's a good, that's a good one. Blizzard. I don't know. I mean, EA is just... Man, they've become corporate. Holy smokes, have they become yeah. corporate. The way they talk, the way they do game releases the way they release unfinished games battlefield 2042 was a disaster <laughs> oh my god i just i just have no faith in ea if, if they announce mm -hmm. a major game for ea i'm just like not excited about it i'm still a little salty about uh battle battlefront 2 uh the campaign they gave us the bait and switch in the marketing campaign you don't mm -hmm. actually get to play as the villain it changes after three levels like <laughs> good riddance good riddance i really do think that you know they signed that contract because it came with a bunch of money 
and they needed to no. <laughs> turn a profit with uh with the star wars ip immediately it was announced right after the disney purchase and yep. i think we've all been waiting for this is it is it was it a decade was it a 10 year mm -hmm. Yeah. Has it been 10 years? Holy smokes. It's, it's been. Well, 2000. They bought it, yeah. Or, 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 sorry, not 2004. 2014 was when. Uh, yeah. Or... <clears throat> well, uh, Force Awakens came out in 2015, right? Yeah. No. The, yeah. The so, sale like... was in 2012, I believe. The, yeah. Okay. The, the changeover was yeah. in 2014. That's really when right. the announcements came. So, yeah, I guess it has been a decade. Wow. That's. All right. How many Star Wars games do we get in the last decade, guys? We got Battlefront 1, <laughs> Battlefront 2. Uh, Jedi, Jedi Fall Fallen Order, Order, Jedi Survivor, and, uh, squadrons. squadrons, Squadrons, and Le Lego Skywalker Saga. If we want to count that, no, I don't think that counts. Did the EA and produce then... it? I guess they produced it. Oh, I don't think EA no. did it. it was, did you get the games? Did. Yeah, it wasn't EA. Yeah, I know. By. Lego. That's true. Legos did. Legos. Mm -hmm. Legos like Fortnite. They don't have laws. And then there's <laughs> there's the Vader Immortal games, but that's ILM. So yeah. right, right. Yeah. So that's different. Oh, right. So yeah, five. What five games in a decade? Five from EA. That's all they did with it. Yep. That's all they did with it. I don't know how much they paid for that license. I hope five games were worth it, EA. It was screw it was you, good riddance. Like... Bring on the new developers. <laughs> <laughs> Wes Jacob thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's like the crazy thing it was five games, but like it was like three games in the last like four years. So like for the vast majority, it was just nothing. It was very yeah, it was like back Battlefront, in, like, Battlefront back two. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. So they were they were heavily banking on Battlefront, and now it's a fun yeah. game because you can keep. Um, the interest level, if you keep like adding DLC packs, is it's yeah. massively multiplayer, not a, completely massively, but there's a lot of multiplayer content there instead of a yeah. single player game. So it's easier to get more people involved. You can play with your friends yeah. and all that. So you can push that content pretty far down the line until you got to make something new. Because they, they yeah. made the original Battlefront, right? And then they made mm -hmm. Battlefront 2 like right after that. There wasn't anything in between. Yeah, no, because no. they cause they did like the, the Death Star expansion, they did the Bespin expansion, they did the Scarif expansion, mm -hmm. or on Rogue One time with Battlefront One, mm -hmm. but that game mm -hmm. never quite caught on. And then the Battlefront Two, once they fixed the monetization, that multiplayer was awesome. And yeah, then they did was. like the big Clone Wars update, which was awesome. And then they announced that they were stopping support. And I know. <laughs> then they released a celebration one, and they were like, "Why?" <laughs> oh yeah, I know, I know. Yeah, I mean. I don't know. I, I knew that Star Wars gaming was in trouble when they released the first Battlefront game. It was just so empty compared to the masterpiece that was Battlefront 2, the original oh, masterpiece, man. like 2005. Like, I mean, it was just, it was a, it was kind of a wreck when they released it. I mean, the, yeah. I, I never forget the first level that I played. I spent like 30 minutes trying to fix the brightness on my TV because oh it was God. blinding. It was blinding white. Blinding. You were the menu, <laughs> yes, the menu. The menu. You could also, oh, so God, I, like, I can't see. It was so freaking white. Like, you nerds are anything. playing this. We're in the dark. What are you <laughs> oh doing? God. It was blinding. I knew yeah. I knew we were in trouble a little bit with that. And it was a lukewarm release, like too. And the game was pretty fun, but like I mean, you play like you play it for like two hours and you feel like you played the whole game. Like there's just nothing yeah. else left. And Battlefront 2, I think, was a huge improvement. Yep. I would say tons of hours in that. Yeah, Had tons of hours time. in that. Uh still, I don't think. There was some talk recently about the the CEO's AMA uh, topping it on Reddit for uh, the most downvoted post of all time. I think it doesn't beat it. I think I think the Battlefront Two is still the most downvoted post in Reddit history about the monetization, monetization. which is oh right, yeah, hilarious because yeah, everybody knows the real history, pride right? Pride and accomplishment. Pride yep. and accomplishment. But the real history is they didn't release it like that, right? Everybody knows that, right? Like it, they never yeah. actually released it with monetization. It was only in the beta, but that will forever go down in history as a PR disaster. Really rough launch. <laughs> but then they kind of righted the ship, seemingly, with Jedi Fallen Order, which came out uh -huh. to a ton of great reviews. <clears throat> We've all been on here the show saying that we really liked it, weren't as obsessed with it as, as some other folks, but really liked it. Um, and now I want to talk a little bit about Jedi Survivor. It's been out for a long time. We got a great review up on the site by our friend Jay, who wrote an awesome uh, kind of write-up uh, for the site, so make sure to go check that out. But for us, I have a couple questions, and I know some of these answers, everybody. That's the secret. We talk <laughs> before the show. Um, I want to ask, one, did you just finish the game? Um, whether you did or not, what did you think about the story or the story that you saw, the gameplay as a whole? And if you didn't finish it, what made you not, I guess? What made you bounce off of it? And, and I'll start with kind of my blanket answers because mine's very easy. I did finish the game. 
Um, I beat, I beat it like within the first week, mostly out of fear. Honestly, I didn't want to be spoiled. So I, I, I didn't like just do story, but I, I missed a lot of extra stuff. Um, I really, really loved the story. I thought it was really well done. I thought it was better than uh, Fallen Order by, by quite a bit for me personally. I think the gameplay was way sharper. The map was actually a map and didn't make me want to just jump off a ladder. Um, and the multiple... Uh, the the or the expansion I should say on the on the stances for Cal was better. The customization was great, um, and overall I just think it, took, it told a really nice Star Wars tale. I think the High Republic inclusion made me very giddy seeing like the Nile and High Republic era like pop up as databank entries just made me feel really giddy in a way that I hadn't felt since like Phase One. And the ending I thought it was actually very emotionally impactful when I finished it. I know Jacob I DM'd you when I finished it, and I'm like, oh my god. I took some screenshots that I'm like, this really hit. And then afterwards, it didn't stick with me as much as I wanted it to. And I'm not sure if that's just because I'm consuming a lot more content than I used to. So things just leave as more things come in. But it hasn't had the staying power that maybe I've wanted to. Like, I haven't gone back to finish up the bounties or I haven't gone back to finish up, like, having additional conversations with characters afterwards, which they say opens up. Like, I basically, credits rolled and and I was done. Um. So I want to open us up to you guys, uh, and I'm going to specifically go uh, to Wes because you probably had the most diametrically opposite view to me. Um, <laughs> what has your experience with Jedi Survivor been so far, and why has it been as thus? So I pre-ordered Jedi Survivor. Um, I didn't get the uh, like the Ultimate Edition, but I got like the regular because. Uh, I don't know. I, don't, I probably should have got the ultimate edition. I wanted the extra cosmetics, but um, so I bought it and then the day came and I didn't have time to play it because I was working and a couple of my streamers that I usually watch will play it. So I had to turn that off. So I don't want to get spoiled. And then the next day came and then the next week came and then the next <coughs> oh, no. month came and I still oh. haven't played it. I've downloaded it, but I have not played it. Um, and honestly, it's probably because it's a single player game. It's not multiplayer where there's like a, I mean, there is a skill gap, but there's not necessarily a skill gap with like, if you have a multiplayer game, but I'm just obsessed with first person shooters and, and, um, skill gaps and multiplayer and stuff like that. So, um, I, I know it's there in the waiting. I know I can play it when I get around to it and everything. <clears throat> I don't, I didn't feel like I needed to play it right away. And it's, it's, it's still like, it's still in the back, like it's in my say it's in my backpack, and I haven't pulled it out yet to play. So that's the thing. I mean, it's just that I am not excited enough to play it right now. If I have, if it rains right sure. now and I don't have to go to work tomorrow, I'll play it. But I'm just, I have been busy, and the most of my time has been going to, let's say, work, and then maybe a little cod here and there. But I just haven't been obsessed, yeah. like excited enough to play it. Did it I, is kind of that thing of like you you want to have a good giant session to begin and immerse. Correct. Like I in want a single player game, four or five hours just to sit there, like yeah, in my underwear and eat Cheetos and play this game. Um, I bet you, if you're like me though, Wes, I bet you feel weird about it though, right? You feel a little guilty because you have it and you haven't started it yet because it's Star Wars and you're on a Star <laughs> Wars podcast. But there's something about the game that's just like it's not. There's something like not super enticing about it. Yeah. Well, go right? speak on it, Corey. Yeah, because you're you're like one step up from that with what you've been doing. <laughs> I mean, a little bit, but I'm curious. I want to see. I'm hearing hear what Wes's thought is on this idea, though. Like, oh, why is it? Because it's like, yeah. So, with, we'll we'll start with Jedi Fallen Order. I finished that game and I broke a mouse playing it. Um, so, <laughs> oh, like, God. I remember was, that. Actually, I was just oh, that's poor mouse. And I sold it to somebody on eBay. I'm sorry if you have that mouse, but um, <laughs> 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 what? <laughs> Fantastic. Anyways, good man, uh, but Jedi good Fallen man. Order, I, I played that for hours and hours and hours, and I had a good time doing it. And then I went back and tried to do the complete 100% finish. Um, got lost on Zepho multiple times, and then, but like it was just to me the the membranes and like the and you having to memorize just certain moves, and then you can get yeah. by anything like you. As, if you play it enough, you'll get past mm -hmm. like any kind of boss because yep. you know exactly how it moves, right? Yep. And, and in a multiplayer game, well, you don't have that. It can any be boss. It, well, well. <laughs> in a multiplayer game, it's it can be <laughs> totally random, but there is pattern to these games. Um, yeah. But with uh, because it is Star Wars, 
that may be the only reason that I play this game. Um, and yeah. I'll probably only play sure. it once. But I want to know the story. Definitely want to know the story. But it's just, it's not necessarily because it's a single player game. It's just basically because there's. It takes a big commitment. It does take a big commitment, but I. it's just not gripping me enough for me to grab onto this <clears throat> game to where, like, if it mm-hmm. was, if it was something to where everybody played this with each other, if you had, like, guilds and stuff and much like um uh, the old republic yeah the old republic the old republic was fun yeah but um if but it's old now nobody plays it anymore well i mean that's not true a lot of people play it but not as yeah. not as Get many people update. play it right so <laughs> if yeah. there is it's like a crazy much like we're about to talk about with the open world concept you can have oh. you can have that oh. where you can um go around and i think you can can't you play with other people would you be absolutely able to not mm, it's no. a single player no. game <laughs> Shit. Yes, 100%. See, I probably won't play that game either. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sorry. I mean, it's not open world. I, I, what does that even mean then? We'll talk about it later. I mean, Skyrim. What? What? <laughs> <laughs> right. So, Wes fundamentally doesn't understand what an open world game is. We'll get to that in a second. Uh, but, no, but it's an interesting point. Because, like, Star, because of our, our dedication to loving Star Wars, like, our dedication, like, we, we do love it, and it does cause us to, like, branch out in certain things. And we've talked about that with some books. Like, we, we don't usually read, like, YA or middle-grade novels, and because of that, sometimes we've found some great things in Star Wars, like A Lost Stars or something, but other times you read a book and you're like, ugh, I, I didn't like this. It's not what I would usually do, and I only got it because of the banner. <laughs> so I guess it, it kind of goes both ways in that way. Yeah. Um, so I think that makes sense to me. Corey, what about you? Where are you at? Uh, yeah, so I um, I started Jedi Survivor. I got on the hype train when everybody else did. Um, I did pre-order it because it's a Star Wars game. It's the only games I'll friggin' pre-order. I actually didn't pre-order Starfield, but I have Game Pass, so I'll just get it for free. Uh, there you go. <clears throat> free, quote-unquote, right? Free. Paying for Game it's Pass. It's already included. <laughs> yeah, so I did pre-order Survivor. I, I played it for a couple hours tonight. That was fun, actually. I do like having... If you have friends that you can game with, like... It was fun when all of us like. I think we played Fortnite, right? The game that it came out the night it came out. Remember? Yeah, that it came Fortnite out yep. until while we we're waiting on it to download and stuff. And yep. uh, when that we hit blast. midnight, we all jumped off of Fortnite and we all played for a couple hours, and it was pretty good. Um, you know, I I I think I'm I'm sort of in the camp of Wes a little bit of like the controls are. I really just dis- dislike like level up systems that were that like you unlock moves. <laughs> so like you've <laughs> yeah. you've mastered. You know, you've mastered some moves, and then like you unlock a new move, so you have to try to commit this one to memory. And then if you want to try a different stance, like that's got its own set of moves, and there's not a lot of crossover at, at times and stuff. But I think overall, my and I've not finished it either. I stopped on. Uh, we'll try to be fairly spoiler free. I think is fair, but yeah. at least maybe to the ending and stuff. But uh, we, I stopped on. I'm on yeah. Jetta, I think. Yeah, I quit, so I the quit planets have been widely spread. Everyone knows that now. Yeah, yeah. yeah I quit on Jetta and. Um, I think the biggest problem that happened with, with me on my personal playthrough of Jedi Survivor is what Jacob and I were talking about earlier is Zelda came out because I'm playing <laughs> yeah <laughs> I'm playing on the PlayStation in the bedroom. We have a TV in the bedroom and I got the PlayStation hooked up to it. And Caitlin is playing the new Zelda game next to me on the handheld switch. And I'm playing Survivor on the TV and and she's like new ish to these types of games right so i have to beat some of the bosses for and stuff like that and i was like i'm having more fun playing zelda (laughs) when caitlin needs my help than i am playing jedi survivor and i was like i I don't my time is so limited for gaming it's so limited Mm -hmm. i mean i work like 80 hours a week on the weeks that i work and like i just have very little time and i just really value the time that i play so Mm -hmm. i want to i want the hour that i spend playing games this night to be epic right like happy playing a multiplayer games with a bunch of friends that i haven't talked to in a long time and it's half social half gaming and i'm bad at gaming so i just really hang out or i have to play something that i'm really into and really loving and like it just wasn't that for me the Jedi Mm survivor just wasn't that for me and i think it's Kind of what I was bitching about earlier. It's it's EA. It feels a little corporate to me. It feels like interesting. It feels like they tried to make the story really important, but 
you don't have to make Star Wars important. You can just be a guy trying to make their way in the galaxy, right? You don't have to fight Darth yeah. Vader for it to be a good game. That's my hot take, right? I mean, KOTOR <laughs> had none of that stuff, and it's uh-huh. arguably the best Star Wars game has ever been made. So, you know, I, there's something corporate about it. I'm very excited to see what a non-EA single-player game looks like because I'm really excited to talk about Outlaws here in a bit because yeah. that looks totally different. Yep. And uh, I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to come back to Survivor. I actually put it on. We were talking about this in Slack a couple of days ago. I put it on last week, actually. And uh, I played it for like 45 minutes. And I couldn't remember any of the damn controls. It's been like, <laughs> That's always the key. Like, it's been like Going two weeks since so I hard. played it. And I was like, this is not fun. I'm not having fun right now. So I put Zelda on and played it for three hours. <laughs> yep. All right, Jacob, you have easily put the most hours into Survivor. Uh, preach the gospel finished how cast is. Finished yes. it before anybody else on the team by a large yes. margin, I think, yep. too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. My, my experience was a little bit unique in that regard because, like, you know, I'm in a hotel room right now. I'm a PC gamer pre- predominantly. So I had to crank this game out because I knew I'm here all summer. So I knew once I left my apartment, I would not be able to touch it ever again. So, like, okay, I need to finish oh, it. Oh, I need to get the story bring done. Your it PC also came with you. <laughs> <laughs> I got my surface. Is that, yeah, no. Uh, uh, so I had to crank it out very fast and it's also it came out like the week before finals started so i basically finished it in a weekend because again i also mm-hmm. well i love fallen order i didn't want it spoiled and yeah if i waited too long i was not gonna be able to finish it so i beat the yeah. whole thing i so, also so did fear play... that's our con- only, that's only, my only, constant yeah. it's, it's fear that helped us finish it <laughs> oh yeah i i just the story a though right amount. yeah most of the story yeah I, I played a decent amount after the story ended as well um okay so I really enjoyed the game. I think, like Eric said, I think in the immediate aftermath of it, I was like very caught up in how much I enjoyed it. And it was like, probably like I was ranking it in my like top five Star Wars story in the past like many years. Uh, so I really loved it. It was very high on it. And I think after I had some time away, I still enjoyed most of it. But the last like hour ish of story just didn't age as well for me as I sat on it more. Um, I don't know if it landed as well. It was a lot of stuff that I think if we get a sequel then and they handle these things that they kind of left le- hanging there, uh, I, I will be a little bit more positive on it. But right now, I'm just felt things felt a little rushed at the end to say. Yeah. Uh, but definitely a second yep. in a trilogy feel. Um, yeah. At the end there, which is okay. Because yeah. I, I do think that's what it is. I think you're right. Yeah. Do you but, guys uh, think. Thing, um, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead, Jacob. Sorry, sorry. I was like, I think the big thing for me is I put on PC. And the uh, <laughs> performance wise, it was not a, it was not a fun time. Oh, yeah. No, uh, heard about that. Heard about that. Yeah, like I, most most stuff now. It was the the rough thing was like Fallen Order had this issue too, where not just on PC, just in general, it had a mm-hmm. lot of bugs on launch. Yeah, and then we got this yeah. late delay with Survivor pushing it back uh-huh. a little bit, and I was like, oh well, if they're pushing it back, that means they're fixing things. When we yeah. since they did actually, you know step out and make this delay it'll be mm-hmm. working when we get it and it was it was pretty rough i have like i have a pretty high end pc it's a little older but like still enough where i can run most games <clears throat> very well uh and it was yeah it was a bit rough but you know i still really enjoyed the experience and i think especially playing having been someone that played after the story ended um they actually add a lot of things that make it worth your while besides collectibles to go back and find like there are i mean they are collectibles in a way like a lot of these echoes or like you know different database entries they'll add more that kind of flesh out the story um after you finish the game so that really helped enjoy my like add to my enjoyment and you can go in free roam and they add new voice lines that like reflect the change in the status quo of the game world after the you beat the final boss so like there's definitely a lot of care put into this game i really appreciate it um Mm -hmm. it's like a great experience to just a few things here and there that i think really kind of hampered (laughs) me fully enjoying it yeah totally. that's fair you you are one of our sort of token pc gamers i think on our on our mm-hmm. team mm-hmm. my uh the first time i played um jedi fallen order i played it on pc too actually and and like it was a fairly seamless experience i remember there being some bugs but it like man i, I seen i saw a lot of tiktoks about this one it was like almost unacceptable release yeah. uh it sounds like so did you have a lot of crashes yeah. when you played it i didn't have crashes just performance issues like i only crashed like maybe yeah. In the whole length of the game, maybe twice, but it should be like Coruscant. Like I just wouldn't <laughs> go back there. Like there were things yeah. I had to complete on that. And I'm just like, I can't deal with it. Yeah. Um yeah. there was a few patches that came out that helped a little bit. Uh 
but like especially with some of the bigger like optional bosses you can find in the open world it's just like yeah well this game is all about timing and and i'm hitting like 20 frames a second so uh time is not really a thing i can do right now yeah that sucks and that's kind of what i'm talking about when i'm talking about the corporateness like it it does feel very corporate it feels like they rushed the release a little bit it feels like some of the mechanics weren't so fully fleshed out like you guys probably remember my my bitching in slack a little bit when when it was in like the prologue when they're teaching you how to play the game or whatever and they teach you how to do that stupid the wall jump thing yep, yeah oh my god uh, it's, I, it's, i'm it's still not mechanic i still cannot get over how they, they, yep. they, they put this in this game it's like the mario wall jump except you do it forward and your character just <laughs> front flips towards the wall and yep. you just keep bunny hopping up it's, it looks so bad it performs so bad like and you use this mechanic throughout the game like it's like multiple parts of the game and just the animation looks yep. bad and i hope that new developers give it a little more respect because mm-hmm. it feels very anti-lucas you've heard me talk about this before anti mm-hmm. lucas was very anti the man right and yeah ea well, is not the right publisher to have well Corey, fun fact Last week, we did get another studio uh, that's unfortunately very corporate, but is not EA, and they announced a few things. Because one one of the big complaints we've had about Star Wars on this show is announcing something, and then hearing nothing, and then it gets canceled, which has happened- quietly dies. (laughs) One to eight times. Um, One to eight times. I'm never going to get over Star Wars 1313. I'm still not over it. I'm, I'm sorry, however, as, you sh- as you shouldn't be. However, yeah. last week, I think that we were heard by some folks at Ubisoft and Massive because no. during um, the Xbox presentation, they said, hey, we're announcing a, new, a bunch of new games. Oh, how fun. How great. Um, Like the fourth or fifth, or third game, third, third game they showed, TIE Fighters come out of nowhere. All of a sudden, we're on a planet. Brand new Star Wars game looks impeccable. It's like a two-minute CGI trailer. And they're like Star Wars Outlaws. We're playing as as a, as a outlaw bounty hunter type person. Her name mm-hmm. is Kay Vess. She's got this droid and this amazing little dude. Great, that's so fun. A, a 2024 probably. And they say, oh, but guess what? Tomorrow at the Ubisoft event, we're giving you 10 minutes of gameplay. I know, I know. It was like all of us were like, <laughs> okay, CGI trailer, been there, done that. Nope. Okay, we know what this means. Let's all. <laughs> Calm down because it doesn't mean <laughs> shit. All right. So yes. And then, and then they're like, tomorrow though, there's gonna be gameplay. And we're like, okay. Yeah. Okay. We'll see what you got. Let's see what you got. Yeah. <laughs> I well, and also I guessed it was gonna be like two minutes. I was like, okay, we'll get a little little yeah, little shootout here. Dumb. And um, so what we're gonna do tonight, I think would be really fun. Um, we're gonna pull up the gameplay trailer <clears> and kind of like scrub through a little bit. We're not gonna watch the whole thing bit by bit just because it, it is seriously long. Go watch it if you haven't unbroken. Um, but essentially, I'd love just to kind of touch on some stuff because there's a lot of things in this gameplay that we haven't seen in a Star Wars game before, and we have been asking as a community about. Um, as Wes said earlier, much to his dismay, uh, this is a single player open world game. Okay, um, in the world, are we talking? GTA. Horizon. Is this GTA? Yes. Star Wars. Yes. GTA. Yes. What Red Dead Redemption. Right. Oh, I to know. Um, Horizon Zero Dawn. <laughs> that kind of thing. So we get the start of this gameplay trailer. We see that it's clearly post Empire Strikes Back. We see Han and Carbonite, and we got a lot of syndicates in here. And what would your guys' have thought when we saw this? Like we have seen the pikes and stuff happening in a Star Wars game we can play. Like that's kind of awesome. It was violent. Yes. Yes. I think that there is a lot of story to be told with the syndicates and that have nothing else but, like, no Sith. Maybe a a Jedi here and there just, like, passes by. Don't need him. Whatever. Don't need him. Um, But, yeah, there's (laughs) there's so much because it's like like early mobsters and and crime bosses, right? So you can add Mm -hmm. that into there, and there's so much story to tell. And I hope that's Greedo. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's not he's uh, he's so dead. Just, he's, yeah, like... he's dead. He's definitely dead. Oh. So, so what? Uh, just to remind me again, what time period is this? Post this Empire. Is post Strikes Empire. Back. Post Empire. Yeah. Okay, 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 okay. Yep. Or the bounty hunters area, I, perhaps. I, yeah, I am. A, that that's the thing that kind of scares me as you know a, a continuity junkie and a comic junkie. It's like okay, well, we're post Empire. We're dealing with with uh, syndicates. Mm-hmm. 
we just told like two years of comic book stories. That's basically this exact thing. Um, so I look, I'm going to enjoy this game regardless, but like the, 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 uh, hot takes, I'm going to have to wade my wade through, uh, when this comes out, <laughs> if it does yeah. like mess with yeah. continuity is going to be really bad. And I'm not looking yeah. forward to that. Um, uh, you know, I'm sure it's going to be lying. great. Mute you know, like, liberally. Okay. We got a little no, bit of that like, from Book of Boba Fett, right? Just for yeah. Oh yeah. yeah crime yeah, syndicates, did. you know, it wasn't anything yeah. like uh, they went into with the comics. I don't think. Yeah. So we get, so we're starting off in this gameplay trailer. We see K Vest <clears throat> playing some good old Sabak um, in this cantina, and then we get introduced to the real star of the show here. This is Nyx, um, our can companion appreciate- buddy. Can we just appreciate that this is a live animal and not a droid for once? Because the droid yes. pet is the oldest trope now too, and it's not. We love that. I mean, it's such a it's such a classic it's been trope. Great. First introduced from the very beginning in the very first Star Wars film. Yes, yep. yes, we all love our droids, but every character in a video game in the last decade has had a droid as a sidekick, <laughs> and I'm true. very yes. glad that it's a living creature. It's really cool. Yeah. We had a really great time with him. He looks adorable, and also in the gameplay game. trailer, because this is the this is the first trailer, right, Wes? This is yeah, the game. This is the first trailer. trailer. Okay, yeah. And, like in the gameplay trailer, we see like he's used as like, hey, go grab that. Hey, activate that. And he like at one point grabs K like uh, uh, an assault blaster, like grabs yeah, a does. weapon, and like so making him useful is kind of like how BD One is. In the other games, like in, in Survivor, eventually BD1 can like shoot bolts of electricity and help open doors and stuff. Mm. And I like that element of having not only a thing that's cute, but is actually actively helping go to change the battlefield. You know? Yeah, for sure. For yeah, sure. that is a that is a good thing that they announced it after the trailer, saying, "Hey, we actually do have gameplay with this because anybody mm-hmm. can work for a year and put out some cinematic." Um, CGI mm-hmm. and not have actual developed gameplay um, right. in the background, uh, right? They, like, <laughs> Dare I say? Yeah. Oh, you do. Yeah, <laughs> the game that's maybe it's real. No, it's not. It's never coming it's out. Not. Clips, clips is not real. <laughs> this is coming not before it. It just didn't exist. Just as real as right. KOTOR. Just as real as uh, Star Wars Hunters. You know, oh all God. these games we're definitely going to get. Yep. <laughs> I will say one of the things I really liked about this trailer as well is that so for this first trailer it shows. Many planets, but, you know, and we saw many planets in Jedi Survivor and stuff, and that wasn't open world, but it shows Kay on the speeder going around, and it seems like you have so much more access of movement. Like, we can go to so many places, which is why I've seen a lot of folks comparing this to something more like Red Dead, where it's like, you can get on your horse, you can just go around. You can get on your speeder and just go places and do yeah. things in a much larger area and a much larger scope. And I'm hoping that the finished product really gives us a lot of that, because we do see a little bit of that in the gameplay that they released with K, like going in speeder chases and all these kind of things around her planet. So I think there's a lot of really cool potential with that. Yeah, I think um, I think just at a glance, like the game looks, I just, I just wanna have a moment of appreciation for the fact that it doesn't look like it's gonna be Jedi Force Sith heavy yeah. for once. Yes. Like mm-hmm. that is such a big risk to take like from a game studio perspective i would say just because like you know every everybody like it's corporate right everybody thinks that you have to have lightsabers to be cool right yep. and that's not true we there all know so that few jedi i know, I know. <laughs> yeah, we all know that because we're diehards right but like yeah. it's hard to convince the man of that right mm-hmm. but i think we i think it's very obvious that like a character that is a gunfighter right and a smuggler mm-hmm. and kind of this shadowy character is awesome i think that's just yeah. like so obvious to us right yeah and it's just wild to me that we really haven't had one of these games kind of ever i mean even in battlefront you had a lightsaber level right i mean yeah right too, right yeah, so you still had that luke episode and <laughs> so i don't know i mean i'm just very i just really appreciate the fact that it looks like this is going to be they 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 took some risk it looks like i guess yeah. what I'm trying to say, which i really yeah. appreciate and the gameplay of it does look polished too. I think again, gameplay demos—you can do anything you want in ten minutes. Like, not anything, but you can do a lot. You can make it look cleaner. But I like that there are stealth elements, like we're seeing here on screen right now. It looks like you can kind of point um, Nick's where you want him to go and do certain things. And then, like the actual oh, okay. movement of K is very smooth. Like we've seen this with Last of Us. We've seen it in Un- the Uncharted's. Like this is not groundbreaking. But I think that's the key thing is we also don't need 
to break new ground on all this. We just need to use the game mechanics of games that have been wildly successful and great yeah. mm -hmm. and apply them to Star Wars. And I think that's what I'm seeing with this. I think they did they say yeah. this is um this is mirrored off the division? Um It's the same company. Okay. I think mm -hmm. Massive still did it, but I don't but it's I don't think it's gonna have like, you know, get your purple gun and your oh, right, blue right, gun. Right, right, right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it's the same engine. I think. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Visual wise. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That, that's yeah. from that from the hip effect that she just did was, was badass, dude. I that was super fun. Yeah. It just looks like a great time, and I, and it, so this right here, I also like. Okay, there's gonna be options to like upgrade the blaster, use different kinds, because when you have a blaster, it can be pretty lame. Like, and then you shoot, shoot, and then you shoot, shoot, and then you shoot, shoot. <laughs> yeah. But it seems like there's like other tactical options to use, um, which they're gonna be very, very fun. Okay. Honestly, the, the shooting mechanics remind me a lot of Battlefront 2, like, especially like watching yeah. this the second time. Like it's like seems pretty similar. I know a a lot, there's been a lot. Yeah, I know there's been a lot of people like talking about like, you know, it's an Ubisoft game. Is it just going to be Far Cry within that or Code of Paint or Assassin's yeah, no, Creed? No, that's Avatar Frontiers of Pandora, which is Far Cry, <laughs> yeah. with, which, which <laughs> I will also buy. But yeah, yeah, let's be clear, sure. <laughs> that's Far but, Cry. Like, honestly, for me personally, if it's like a B tier game with like an S tier Star Wars coat of paint, I'm gonna have a great time. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Oh, 100. percent As long as it's polished, this is all I ask. I just yeah. want the game play mechanics to feel pretty smooth, and for the experience yep. to be pretty smooth. Like, even if the story is not like, like I said, you don't have to fight Darth Vader at the end of the game for yep. it to be a good game, right? As long as the experience is smooth, it feels like mm -hmm. a completed game. It's got a couple little interesting things to it. I mean. Just in the gameplay footage, it looks like nothing we've we've seen in Star Wars. No, like since no. friggin' Jedi Outcast, I think was the last really uniquely open game like this. Like mm -hmm. that's that's ages ago. That was I think so... it hasn't aged well at all. Yeah. That's like fifteen <laughs> years ago, right? So yeah. like, and it just looks like it's risky and new and different. And yeah. I just really appreciate how this looks like it's gonna play out. I'm very yeah. interested in the the choices aspect of this. We had a really big conversation about this, I think in our, in our gaming chat about like, are you actually going to have meaningful choices? Because you know, I'm sort of in the camp of like, if we are playing as this sort of morally gray character, I would like mm -hmm. the ability to, 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 to be that person, right. Yeah. To make some bad decisions, right. Yeah. To throw over <laughs> the good guys occasionally. Yeah. Are we going to get to do that? Or are we going to get pigeonholed? No, I know. Are we going to get that, pigeonholed into being in the rebellion? It's not an RPG. I, so I so think I that see, there's going to be a story regardless. Yeah, I think like the 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 end result of every choice is going to be the same, uh like especially story-wise. It just might be a fact of like choosing how your encounters gameplay wise handle yeah, out like, like there's gonna be the stealth option. There's like you see later yeah. on in the trailers like you bribe, you don't bribe. If you don't bribe, maybe well, if you don't bribe, you're gonna have to run out of there quick. If you do bribe, maybe you lose some yeah. money, but then you have an yeah, easier yeah. encounter. I think it's a lot of gonna be shaping your gameplay yeah. experience, but not so much shaping who K Vess is and what's yeah, happening for to sure. Her and I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. Yeah. I think the I think my point is I just don't want I don't wanna be I don't wanna I don't want all the marketing to be about a game called Outlaws. And all the syndicates, all the violence, all the stuff we've seen in the trailers, we're like, ooh, this is kind of dark and moody. Like, I don't want us after the prologue to join up with the rebellion, right? Then we're fighting yeah. stormtroopers and then we're against the empire. Like, they could do that if they wanted to. And yeah, I just hope that doesn't happen. I, I guess, think you can I'm count right? on it. Yeah. I think, I think, you, see, I think you'll I fight know, the empire, man. but I think there might be a, there's going to be a morally gray, there's going to be more really <laughs> light, but. At the end of the day, you're gonna the you're not gonna join the empire and be a fascist. You're gonna you're gonna be killing the empire. I don't want to join you for profit. That's what I'm trying to say. I just don't want, I don't want to have to have yet another alongside the mm -hmm. movies game story. Yeah, I, I, mean, feel how that. Many, I feel how that. How many how many stories do we have? And how many books and comics and everything? Do we have these characters that like? They have these little subtle references to the to the OT trilogy, right? It's just over and yep. over and over again. It's just so worn out at this point. Like we don't have to. Yeah. There's more interesting stories in the gigantic Star Wars universe than I just agree. Han, Luke, and Leia. You know yeah. what I mean? And what, the well, fact and that Han is in the trailer is a little <laughs> worrisome to me. I, I, it's I, time period. I'm torn between. Yeah, I'm torn between it just like being a, a thing to set the scene and like you know not being part of yeah. the story or yeah, the, the 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 nagging fear that maybe it is you're stealing han back is the oh heist my god that you're trying to go on <laughs> please oh, don't no. do that well, but i really also don't like that. Been frozen in carbonite twice and they're telling the I second see. story yeah. <laughs> 
Well, story <laughs> aside. He, he, he actually wakes up. You have to wake up. He's like, oh, no, 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 get back in there. <laughs> go back, go back. Push him in, push him in. Um, Wes, could you, uh, in, in that footage, can you skip ahead? Uh, so there's, a, there's uh -huh. a conversation thing we talked about. There's a conversation element, which is good. But can you skip ahead after that when you're running away? Um, mm -hmm. after the okay. Empire, like, kind of says, we're going to get you. Pretty so after in. the whole cantina far, thing, yeah. it's pretty far into the end. Because I want to highlight a gameplay element um, of you're running to your ship. Oh, I got Because you. for the first time that I've seen in games like this, you walk in real time up to your ship, and then we can fly out mm. in real time into the atmosphere and then seamlessly be in space and have space yeah. combat. Look at this. Which like, we like, haven't like, seen right, so, since like that's obviously right? right here. Obviously animation. And look, now we're yep. in the control again. Like, that is yeah. awesome. That looks really seamless. Yep. I really like Little that. loading that's, screen. That's fine. Yes. Like, that's, I'm pretty sure... Yeah, that's I'm pretty gonna sure wreak EA havoc on your hard drive, by the way. Just yes, it is. not on my PS5, sure. baby. <laughs> Console yeah, gamers forever. Get the SSD. <laughs> that's right. That's right. I'm pretty sure EA calls Jedi Survivor an open world game, and it's not. Not really. Yes, it's not. having having a big map doesn't make it an open world game, but mm -hmm. being able to seamlessly go between planets kind of does make it that. Like this yeah. looks really smooth, like that. And yeah. Do, like different jobs, and what I'm more interested in, not necessarily this game entirely is the dlc content of the stuff that they can yep. add on after the fact and you can go and do other jobs and like yep. help crime bosses and then and then maybe like we yeah, said there isn't an fun. actual ending story you don't you're not you're not stuck to one lane you can actually yeah. broaden out and be an I asshole so. if you want yeah to. like there's always <laughs> another job like that's perfect yeah. for an open-ended ending mm -hmm. like it doesn't have to be because cal is like i'm rebuilding the order and she could be like i'm getting a buck also Real quick, on the screen, for those of our visual or people that are just listening to this Akiva. and haven't watched this yet, they're going to a, the Akiva system. Jacob, I know you know. Corey and West, do you know. know what Akiva is? Nope. This is where um, our boy Wedge Antilles and Nora Wexley eventually live in the Aftermath oh, books. Yes. So I Mr. This Bones now. and Snap Wexley. So that's the kind of yeah. stuff I'm interested Akiva in. Orbit. The auxiliary stuff. Um, mm -hmm. So cool. Snap Wexley should be in Akiva right now. <clears throat> so that, that kind of stuff I think would be very fun. If you're going to cross over, don't take me to the Rebellion. Don't take me to a Jedi. Take me to some of these book characters that have been, like, tertiary. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, yeah. That could be super fun. Yeah, I think there's lots of room Give for that. Give us some fun. Sure. <laughs> yeah. So, Build? overall, very excited. Coming out next year. Yeah. Like, I'm glad we're doing this. This sets a good precedent for lots of games coming out. And um, it wouldn't be a show without Jared popping in and say, Grey Jedi? Question mark? <laughs> legends, legends, Great legends. regular people. Great regular people. Wow. Do, do we even want to wade into who people are trying to headcanon Jalen into being? Oh, my God. Who? Okay, I'm not an expert. I, I'm, not, I'm, not a, I'm not as... This is a part of Legends I didn't really touch, but the guy at the end of the cinematic trailer who is sitting in your cockpit, his name is oh, Jalen. Oh, Kyle Katarn? Yeah, everyone's going to be Kyle Katarn. <laughs> Yes. Oh yeah, he looks just oh, like him. Oh, the guy yeah. with the with the goatee and the one uh, shoulder thing. Like, <laughs> yeah, he's Kyle he, He's he's default white guy number six, and therefore <laughs> yeah. he must be Kyle Katarn. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> do yeah. you think? Uh, do you, is there any chance? Is there a snowball's chance in hell that the trailer info they gave us is fake and like the uh, like like it's not actually his name? His name actually is Kyle Katarn. Like, no. He is genuinely the character. It, no. I don't think they like. I don't think. He, well, yeah. One, I don't think that's him. Two, if it was, it's not the trailer fake. It's just him with like having a code name or something like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's I what, that's like what I mean. That's kind of like what I mean. Like folk or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Eh. faked it a little bit. If it is that, I've, I, I guess here's mm -hmm. the thing: the amount of times that we have tried to apply clown makeup, being like, "This is where they'll put in the legends character." Like, it <laughs> doesn't happen like that. No, like, main people. Doesn't. We got the outfit in Jedi Survivor that that harkens back. That was a fun little thing. Like there might be fun things like that, but like Thanks. they're not gonna take the protagonist of older games <laughs> and sneak them into a trailer with a different name. <laughs> you know, like probably not. Yeah, they know what probably they're doing. Not. Believe it or not, I, I bet a lot of the people at Massive probably played those games. <laughs> I'm just gonna I'm, gonna I'm gonna guess. You know, That's fair. They I would know hope what they're that doing. every developer's um, mm -hmm. business model and their company like headquarters is just like grandma's boy where they just they have like their own desks and they just sit there and play xbox all day long and they do their levels at home and they come back and then they have a you know a like a duel in the coffee bar of like they're playing frogger or something remember that did you ever watch grandma's boy 
I'm yeah, sorry, what? I, <laughs> I watched it once, but I forgot about it. Showing your age here, Wes. What the oh hell are you God, talking about, man? It's such a great video game. <laughs> ga- uh, it, 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 it was in that kind of like uh, R-rated. It's not like a stoner comedy, but it's in that way. Yeah, it's like it was at like 2003, 2004. Like fanboys, same time as fanboys. Something yeah, but like, era. yeah, yeah, that's funny. Yeah, no, but, I mean, I'm this game looks interesting. I think it's got a lot of pros for it. You know, I actually am tempering expectations for this, and this is just because I have trauma bit. because of Star Wars. Yep. Uh, so. You know, let's see how it plays out. I'm excited to see how it how it goes. Uh, I trust Ubisoft about as much as I trust EA, so we'll, we'll see yeah, how we'll that see goes. But <laughs> listen, I think it's I think it's uh, it's new, it's fresh. It looks like they've taken some risk. We'll see how the story actually plays out. I'm really excited for it. I think it looks fun. Yeah, and yeah. It looks like there's gonna be lots to talk about and new lore. Hey, we'll new still planets. be playing Starfield by that time anyway. So like, I know. whatever. That's right. You know? <laughs> Kajimi is in it, right? Isn't Kajimi in it? Kajimi. Did we see Kajimi in the trailer? It looks yeah. like Kajimi at least. Kajimi, yeah. Kantataka, uh, yeah. yeah. Tatooine. A lot of possibility. Tatooine. It's always Tatooine. The, the planet that <laughs> looks Tatooine. just like Kobo right after they put out Jedi Survivor, but is not yep. Kobo. That being <laughs> said, like, I will say of all the Kobo's games, this, this is, this is my, this is my last big point on this. Because I feel like I could be like, oh, do they all always want to go to Tatooine? For a game about the syndicates, where Jabba the Hutt is probably going to be very prominent because he rules the Hutt, like, Tatooine's mm-hmm. fine. Give you that. Like, great. Yeah. That's a, that That's actually fine. makes sense because he's there. So fine. I'll give that. It makes sense. I think this is the first game that they've released since, honestly, the Star Wars buyout that um, kind of raised my eyebrows out, like, genuinely. Like, awesome. I mean, we, like, when they when they announced that Battlefront was coming, I was like, "Oh, sweet, excellent, Battlefront, one of the classics." Of course, they would make this. It's an easy money maker. Of course, they announced Jedi Survivor. I'm like, "All right, fine, finally a first person game." They swung really, really hard in the direction because everybody was so mad because they didn't have a campaign for Battlefront Two. They swung really, really hard. They made an entire <laughs> game just for single player. Okay, yep. this is interesting. Whatever the gameplay was kind of to be expected, but this is like the first real risk. It looks like, and mm-hmm. we'll see how it plays out. Like. If we get pigeonholed into the rebellion, then maybe it won't be as unique as I kind of hope it is. But I think it's got a lot of potential. It looks gorgeous. The gameplay yes. looks smooth. It looks fun. I hope it's I hope it's fun. I hope it's as fun as it looks. I yeah. mean, yeah. I'm hopeful. And I Don't hope get your not- sick notes ready too. We got a lot of games coming between now and then. So you you got to you gotta mark your time. Like, like Wes and Corey, you guys gotta we're gonna have to put up blocks for you to play all the games you need to play before no. this comes out. <laughs> Final <laughs> Fantasy 12 16 is coming out this week. Uh, uh Starfield's coming out. <laughs> Spider Man 2 is coming out. I a skip a lot of games. I play a lot of games to 75% and then quit. I played <laughs> Spider Man to 75%, Hogwarts to 75%, the first Zelda game to 75%, and then I quit. Like I just get you know, I I can see the end of the system. campaign ahead of me, and yeah. I just can't get I can't get that far because if I go through the campaign, I'll never play a side quest ever again if I finish the campaign. Well, but, we just uh, need to like, yeah, we need to adopt like the TikTok strategy of having subway surfers next to a video, but instead it's just an F one race. So you just have like the F one race oh, on your good, second yeah. monitor, the yep, game on your first playing. monitor. I guarantee you'll finish. I can do that. I can do that in the sim rig. I mean, I got three <laughs> yeah, monitors right there. It's easy. <laughs> yeah, I have. I've, I have never found a, a more meditative uh, moment than what I'm probably going to do later tonight, honestly, is I pour just a glass of wine, I sit, I put an audio book in my AirPods, and I play MLB The Show on mute. Because it's, like, not a really mentally intense game, because you just got to hit the ball, and then it goes. <laughs> but I'm doing something, and the audio, ugh. Uh. So if any of my, my, my gamer and, and book or music listeners, podcast listeners, I know a lot of people do that. Some people might be gaming right now listening to us. I am way too ADHD for that. There's cool. no like, way. I've been gaming this well. whole time. What do you I know. <laughs> <laughs> Anytime we lag, it's because Wes is playing God. I'm not a multitasker. <laughs> that is for sure, dude. There's no way. Uh, well, we gonna, we're going to find out how well we can multitask uh, as we get closer to Outlaws. And, hey, hopefully this is an onslaught of new Star Wars games that are going to be announced. I, I think that the success of this will, will kind of show where we're going and – Personally, I think the end goal of this, how cool would it be if we brought back Star Wars movie tie-in games for the new films? Yeah. Let's go. Fun. Revenge of the Sith game, really dude? Oh, oh my Remember God. Oh, hey, hey, real fast, before we <laughs> end our show. Alternate ending for that game? Alternate ending? 
Yes. Real talk. Let's go around the horn. I want everybody to name their top three Star Wars games of all time right Ooh. now. Top three Star Wars games of all time. I will go first because yes, it's, it's very easy for me. Okay. KOTOR number one. You guys have heard me talk about this. Unbelievably. But I think I, I would say it's probably my favorite game of all time. Genuinely. All right. KOTOR mm-hmm. one. All mm-hmm. video games, period. Favorite game of all time. KOTOR one. Revenge <laughs> of the Sith. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. The game was freaking phenomenal. It came out before the movie came out. Uh, and I, I knew the movie already when we went and see it. That was fun. And uh, I think I would say the original Battlefront 2. I think I would. I loved it. The original right. original campaign was just brilliant. I would never forget the line just burned into my brain forever at the level where you fly into the, the Jedi Temple and he's like, everybody knew what we were going to do. Nobody said a word. I yeah. love that. I love that that campaign was so fun. No Russian. Not a word. Not when we not when we landed on the on the temple steps. Not when we marched into the doors. Not a word. I love it. Was so dark, man. I love that. that was Top three. Classic what stuff. do you got? All right. So I'm gonna I'll start with number three. So number three, I would say is, well, I guess I haven't played them all yet. But um, oh my god, there are so many now that I even think about it. Holy I know, crap. dude. There's so many Go games. With your gut. So many Star Wars games. Um, Go with your really. gut. <laughs> I want to say, um, what is the one Jedi Apprentice? Like, it's not Jedi. It's um, it's not Outcast. Apprentice is it's the not first Outcast. One. It's uh, right. uh, Jedi Academy. Jedi Academy. Yeah. Jedi, Jedi Academy. Jedi yeah, Academy. Yeah, that's the first I put that one, as number right? three. That was super fun because it took me so long to figure out how to cut that tree down for the bridge. And Dude, oh it was so hard. <laughs> Holy shit, that, that game was so hard. That was such bullshit. Absurd. Uh, I know. Awful. <laughs> Number okay. two is Battlefront Two, um, uh-huh. twenty, what? Two thousand five. Something like that. No, no, no. Oh no, the, the second one. one, the new one. Okay, yeah, new one. all right, that's cool. One. Modern, yeah. all right. The new one for sure. And then number one is Battlefront Two, two thousand five. Okay, there you go. Go. I love, there I go. love that game. I still have it on CD-ROM. Do you young gentlemen know what a CD-ROM? Is? Absolutely. Oh my god. <laughs> god I'm, I'm younger than you, Wes. I'm not dead. <laughs> <laughs> it came with four <laughs> CDs. And I was like, Dude, I, there had was, a, uh, I had a Walkman with a tape, okay? <laughs> Do you remember? I listened to Raffi on cassette, Wes. How dare you? Oh, my God. <laughs> Do you remember the the little jingle sound it would make when you completed your objective in the campaign, the original Battlefront 2? They're like, you know what I'm talking about? Yep, the little, yep, yep. Listen, that is a medical device sound. I did not know this, is it but really? it is absolutely a medical device sound. I don't know. I was in one of the hospitals that I work at, and it's like the – there's like a like a, a machine that like detects heart rates and stuff like in the walls, and I was hearing this damn sound all day. It's like is somebody playing Battlefront in this? Hot? It is the exact same jingle. I swear you to God, it. it just freaked me out. You found anyway, it. Never gonna forget that because it happened way too frequently. Like every couple of minutes, it would play it because you completed the mm-hmm. objective. All right. Anyway, Jacob, what do you got? <laughs> Corey's just walking down the hospital hallway, yelling just like the simulations. I know. <laughs> 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 oh my uh, god top three okay number three i'm gonna go a little different um i'm gonna say squadrons i okay all right. multiplayer was not the funnest thing in the world uh but i was able to play the campaign in vr with oh a my god oh, okay. so it's just like okay i'm fully flying a starship right now like okay. i can look all around like the the doing a uh role in an A-wing and be able to look above me and track my target with the flight. The most <laughs> insane game experience I've ever had. That's like, incredible. I don't okay. care if multiplayer sucked. <laughs> it was just such a cool experience to do that. And like, I just like, you feel like you're a star fighter in the moment. That's amazing. Uh, so that, I want to do that three. still. That's yep. on my list. Yeah. No, it's, it's worth it. Um, number two, I'll go, I, I'll, I'll go KOTOR. Um, mm, classic. And I'm going to say, I'm going to cheat. I'm going to say for number one, I'm going to say the gaming of, Jedi Fallen Order combined with the story of Survivor, be- just because of sure. the performance would... issues I've had with Survivor were that's fair, pretty significant. Totally legit, totally legit. Um, all right, I'll bring us home with. Uh, so I agree with a couple of you guys have said. Uh, there's one I have to say as my number one that has already been said, but I'll do two others that we haven't mentioned yet. Um, so in my second and third whatever, uh, one is Star Wars Obi Wan for the original Xbox. Oh my uh, god, that was. My mm-hmm. first, sorry to bring you back to that in that moment of trying to get that thing to work on your PC, Wes. Um, but I played that. I I got that from a guy on the playground in elementary school because I made more free throws than him, and he had to let me borrow his game. I remember that to this day. And then nice, I just kept nice. the game. I don't know. 
older than me by a grade. Was he like 20 years old? He's one grade older. One grade older. Come to my white van, I'll show you this video game, little boy. (laughs) (laughs) Why that game's awesome is that it's, I mean, definitely doesn't hold up now, but you could swing the lightsaber with the right stick. You had force powers, but then you had a Jedi battle arena where you could play as all kinds of different prequel Jedi. And that's where I fell in love with Plo Koon because he had such a cool design that I got to play as Plo Koon. So I liked him a lot there. So Star Wars Obi-Wan. Um, next is uh, Star Wars uh, Pod Racer on the PC Racer. back in the day. Not oh, the Racer's oh, Revenge update, like the OG Pod Racer game. Yeah, sure. Um, played that a ton when I was a kid with my dad, actually. It was the only ones he'd ever played with me. Uh, played as Team Topagalese. He was my dude. Loved him. Nice, nice. <laughs> So, uh, but but number one, the one I put the most hours into, the one that I really became like obsessed with, is similar to Wes, uh, 2018 Battlefront 2. That one was my <clears throat> multiplayer <clears throat> gaming one, like the most I played since Halo 2, probably. Wow, loved it. Uh, every bit of it. Was bummed when they got rid of support for it, but mm-hmm. yeah, just I the amount of fun I had in that game once they yeah. fixed the monetization, I just had. It's a great a wonderful, comeback. wonderful time. That's one of the great, I think I would call that one of the all-time great comebacks in gaming. Like, No Man's yes. Sky is up there, too, yep. as a great comeback. Yep. But, like, yep. that game really turned around. It got a lot of bad press when the game came out. Again, there was never any monetization in the game. It was only in nope. the beta. It never was released with any monetization. And uh, But it was still a little weak when it came out. But, man, as they added stuff to it and they added new characters, by the end, yep. it was really, really full. There was really a lot fun. Starfighter that. Assault is the most fun I've ever had playing no. flying things in yeah. games. So. I just that's, that's, disagree. That's, that's wrong. That's incorrect. <laughs> hey, that's a, what a stupid-ass opinion, that Eric. <laughs> what a terrible opinion. You're f- well, freaking wrong. What better way to end the show than with my trash-ass opinions? Because <laughs> everyone that is going to do it for this week's episode <laughs> of The Living Force. You support us at Patreon. Thank you so much. Head over to patreon.com slash Utini to join the family. A special thank you to Brian Dooley, Earl Q, Carl Sander, Zach W., and Michael Fry on our Jedi High Council, and James T., Ashley Ingalls, Colton Fife, and Chris Carrizo on our Alliance High Command. You can find us on Twitter. I'm at Eric Eilers, and Corey is at Corey M. Helton. West is at Boss West, and Jacob is at Jacob boosh and the show is at living force pod a special thank you to matt davenport our amazing editor ryan our graphic designer extraordinaire and wes our producer and community manager thanks to all of you for hanging out tonight thanks to Corey, wes and jacob for potting with me and as always may the force be with you